The temptation to use machine learner comes to many people. The fact that machine learning can freely and easily select variables to predict why. We sometimes want to estimate causal effect of D, our treatment. In this case, uh, it's 0, 1 on Y, conditional on other uh, potential predictors. So we get the prediction at D equal to 0, Y hat D equal to 0, Z. And then we get the prediction, but now at D equal to 1. We use the same machine learning once, get two predictions, and we estimate our tra treatment effect naively by simply deducting one prediction from another. And we should never do that. The reason is simple. Machine learning was built for prediction. It does not care about confounders, whereas confounders are important when we want to have the proper causal inference. So confounding variables are usually highly correlated with treatment. Right, because they are the ones that affect treatment and they are the ones that affect why, the machine learner will tend to drop either the treatment or the confounder in this situation. Both confounder and the treatment variables will be seen from the point of view of the machine learning as substitutes to each other in terms of prediction quality. Choosing only one variable among two uh, substitutes is, is predicated by the fact that we, we penalize machine learning for overfitting. Remember, we penalize our lasso for the sum of coefficients that lasso selects to use. We penalize our decision tree for the number of leaves. So we penalize our machine learner. And so our, our machine learner tries hard to find a way to predict well using the smallest number of variables. Now, let's have an example. Suppose we are interested uh, on the causal effect of college degree of an individual on his or her midlife income. But there is also a confounder to this. There can be many different confounders, but assume for a second that there is only one confounder in this situation. And once we control for it, we can find what is the treatment effect of college degree on income is. So parental income can be a confounder in this situation. Why? Because it affects both midlife income of an individual. For example, kids from richer households will inherit wealth from their parents, whereas kids from poorer households will not. And this will already set a gap in the income of those individuals in their midlife. But also parental income is likely to affect college degree. For example, kids, richer kids will not have financial constraints. If they want to go to college, they will, whereas poor kids might find themselves constrained or have to work earlier or uh, they may find themselves going to uh, worse schools, whereas acceptance to college degree requires you to go for an elite school first. Hence, there can be different reasons for how parental income is going to affect the probability that the person is going to college. But in the end, we may end up, end up with just two groups rich kids who attended college and poor kids who did not. And this kind of situation is going to create lots of correlation between college degree and the socioeconomic background of the person in his childhood. So when you use a machine learner on this data, the machine learner may decide to use only parental income to predict midlife income and drop in college degree or vice versa using college to predict, to predict midlife income and drop in parental income. If it drops college degree, then your estimate of college degree effect, those that naive estimate using machine learning predictions, will be zero, which is not true, right? There is some effect of college on uh, your midlife income. If it drops parental income, then your estimate will be biased upwards, assuming that the effect of parental income on college is positive. It will include the true effect of college degree plus the direct effect of the parental income, the inheritance. So your machine learner in the situation will be really happy because it did its job very well, predicting midlife income. But at the same time, we cannot use this model for causal inference because it's likely to drop either confounder or the treatment. We will not see the causal effect this way. So when we care about prediction only, we can't think about machine learning as a black box. We don't really care how it does its job as long as it does its job. Hence, we should not use this model trained for prediction to answer causal questions. To formalize this, 
assume that we can write two causal equations. One uh, shows how y depends causally on d and z, and uh, the second one shows how our treatment, assignment or treatment, depends on our confounder z. Note that we can always rewrite the equation of y by substituting d with z. We will get something like this, the, the value, the function of y from z only. Or we can substitute z with d and we get a reduced equation like this. Now, if we ask machine learning algorithm to uh, predict y, it may end up with predicting y using only z or using only d. And it, it still can be that it will keep both, but more likely that it will keep only one of the variables in. And in the first case, if it chooses this functional form, predicting y only using z, the confounder, your approach will estimate um, treatment effect to be zero, which is wrong, right? Because d is not here, it will not change your prediction. Whereas in the second case, d is here, the treatment effect you will estimate will be beta plus 1 divided by c. So this term is the omitted variable bias. And this is also wrong. So the bottom line, you should not use uh, machine learning naively. And if you really need, you use double selection and you use double machine learning or causal trees, which we are going to see soon.